one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good, and it could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me fine. Welcome to uh, Field of Dreams. Season two, and we are in the start of July, so we're more than halfway through the season and heading towards the trade deadline, which probably isn't coming soon enough as with all the trades that have been happening. It's been another crazy week, um, so lots of movement, and I'm sure it's not going to stop before Friday. So we're going to play a few games tonight, and hopefully everybody's going to enjoy some uh, seeing some of their teams being played. Uh, give me one second here to get my screen set up properly. And welcome to Carlos Legends. Hey, Legends, I welcome in. Um, I don't know if anybody else is in the park yet, but uh, welcome everybody that's here. I'm, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. Somebody just shout out a yes or something in there in the, in the uh, chat, if you don't mind, making sure you all can hear me. Give it just a minute. Anybody hear me? All right, great. Hey, Jamie, welcome. All right, well, Jamie, your team is, this is going to be the, we're going to go ahead and broadcast this team this game right off the bat. We're going to do the Canada-Tampa game. We're going to do the D-Gens-Lehigh game. And then um, we're going to come over and do, on day two, we're going to do the Mid-Michigan Amazing game. And if we have time for another one, we may do a fourth one. So, uh, but let's get this thing started. Canada-Tampa Bay. Hey, Bernie, welcome in. We are here at uh, Cleveland Stadium. Uh, we're going to watch Canada play Tampa Bay. Pete Alexander is going to take the mound for Canada. He's got 18 starts on the year. He's 11 and 4 with an ERA of 3.46. This is his third start against Tampa. He's 1 and 0 against them with a 4.08 ERA. Uh, Frank Tanana will be on the mound for Tampa Bay. He's got 11 starts on the year. He's 6 and 5 with an ERA of 3.09. It's his first time facing off against Canada. It's 87 degrees. The wind speed is 17 miles per hour. Left to right. Play ball. All right. And let's take a quick look at the lineup for Canada. Leading it off, center fielder Willie Wilson. Al Kaline batting second. Albert Pujols batting third. Ted Simmons in the cleanup spot batting fifth. Rocky Calavito batting sixth. Ben Zobrist batting seven. Pablo Sandoval. Ken Boyer in the eighth spot. And Roy Smalley will round out the batting order. On defense for the Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers, we have Don Baylor in left field, Matt Kemp in center field, and Sisto Lescano in right field. On first base is Sam Crawford. Bobby Gritch is at second. Mari Wills is at shortstop. Bill Madlock is playing third base. Benji Molina is behind the plate catching for Frank Tanana, who's got... Uh, 11 starts this season, 93 and a third innings pitched, 70 hits. He's only given up 32 earned runs. He struck out 78, walked 32, given up 12 home runs. He's got a 309 ERA, six wins, five losses. 
And let's get to the game. Today I'll face off against Wilson first. Wilson with a 238 average and one home run. And this is a fly ball in the center field. Matt Kemp trails to his right. He'll pick that up for the first out. Al Kaline batting 256, 20 home runs already this year. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And this is going to be in the right field for a single. This will land before Lascano can get to it. So K-line with a single with one out comes Albert Pujols batting 259 and he's got 26 home runs already this year. He's also got 60 RBIs. K-line with a big lead off of first and he's off and running. It was a hit and run it looks like as Pujols pops this up to third base. Bad luck gets under that and K-line has to hoof it back to first. So with two outs that brings up Ted Simmons. Who's batting 258, 15 home runs, and 48 RBIs. He delivers the 1-2 pitch, and this is going to get to left field for a single. That'll move K-Line to second base. Baylor pick it up. Oh, and K-Line rounds second and heads to third. Baylor does not make the throw in time. Bill Madlock didn't get didn't make a good play on the ball, and it got past him and into third. I'm sorry, into left field for a single for Simmons. Runners on the corners with two outs as Rocky Calavito comes up to the plate. Batting 227 this year. 40 RBIs and 15 home runs. Tanana delivers to Calavito, and this is going to be over Wills' head all the way to the fence, and that's going to knock in two, so a two RBI double. Rocky Calavito's 22nd double of the season. Still with two outs, Ben Zobrist comes up, batting 227. 11 home runs, 39 RBIs. Calavito standing on second. Tanana from the stretch. Strike three. He strikes Zobrist out to finally end the inning, but not before the Canada A's score two runs off of three hits. We go to the bottom of two, where the Tampa Bay lineup looks like this. Sam Crawford will lead it off for Tampa Bay. Bill Madlock will bat second. Benji Molina will bat third. In the cleanup spot is Bobby Gritch. Batting fifth, Frank Howard. Batting sixth, Sisto Lescano. Don Baylor bats seventh. Mari Wills in the eighth spot. And rounding out the batting order, Matt Kemp. On defense for the candidates, we got Rocky Calavito in left field. Willie Wilson in center field. Al Kaline in right field. We got Albert Pujols at first base. Ben Zobrist at second base. Roy Smalley may be the shortstop. Ken Boyer at third. Behind the plate catching is Ted Simmons. And on the mound, Pete Alexander. He's got 18 games started, 145 and two-third innings pitched. He's given up 142 hits. 56 of those were earned runs. He struck out 107, walked 25, given up 11 home runs. He's got a 346 ERA. He's got 11 wins, four losses. The first batter he's going to face off against tonight is going to be Sam Crawford, who's got a 264 average. The pitch to Crawford. And this is right back to the mound. Alexander picks it up, fires over to Pujols for the first out. And that brings up Bill Madlock. Bill Madlock batting 233 this season. He's got four home runs this year so far. Here's the one-two pitch to Madlock, and he strikes him out for the second out. So that'll bring up Benji Molina, batting third. And he's got a 175 average, two home runs. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Molina. This is going to be a deep fly ball in the left center field. This is high, deep, and off the fence. Molina with a stand-up double. This is first double of the season. Is that Wow, that is kind of shocking. But, yeah, that's his first double of the year. All right, so with two outs, Molina reaches second base, brings up Bobby Gritch. Bobby Gritch batting 242, 17 home runs, and 47 RBIs. Steve, welcome, Steve. And this is straight up behind the home plate. Ball Simmons ball. trying to get to it, but it not in time. It gets into the stands for a foul ball, and Gritch will get another chance at this. He looks at the – here's the one-two pitch to Gritch. And once again, he pops it straight up. This time, Simmons is going to get under it for the third out. So Tampa goes down 
after getting one hit and no runs. We go to the top of two. Sandoval, Boyer, and Smalley all up to bat for the Canada A's, who lead 2 nothing. All right. Pablo Sandoval has a 278 average this year and 13 home runs. Tanana with a 2-0 pitch. Sandoval with a fly ball in right field. Lescano doesn't even have to move. He'll make the first out. Ken Boyer, 232 average. Six home runs. The pitch from Tanana. A grounder to Madlock. He fires over to one in plenty of time for the second out. And that'll bring up Roy Smalley. Roy Smalley with a 223 average. 16 home runs. Tanana delivers to Smalley. And he goes down on strike. So Canada goes down one, two, three. Quick half inning there for the A's. No runs and no hits. No errors were committed by Tampa. We go to the bottom of two. We're going to see batters five, six, and seven for Tampa. Leading off will be Frank Howard, the designated hitter. Batting 228 this season and six home runs. Here's the full count to Howard. And he'll go down on strikes. That was a big swing and a miss on that curveball for the first out. That brings up Sisto Lescano, batting 226, seven home runs. Here's the first pitch to Lescano, and this is going to be a grounder to Zobrist. He'll glove that one and fly it over to Pujols for the second out. Don Baylor stepping into the plate, batting 269, 10 home runs. He digs in and waits for the pitch from Alexander. Here it comes. Big fly ball in the right field. K-line back towards the fence. He gets under that one for the third out. Canada goes down one, two, three. We go to the top of three. For the A's, they're back at the top of the batting order. And that will be Willie Wilson leading it off. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Fly ball in the center field. Kemp has to go back a couple of steps. He gets under that for the first out. Al Kaline, who's already one for one tonight. He goes down on a big strikeout on the fastball from Tanana. That brings up Albert Pujols. Pujols popped to third his last at bat. Here's the full count to Pujols. This is going to be a fly ball on the field. Baylor back. He gets under that one. That's the third out. Canada goes down one, two, three. We go to the bottom of three for the Deluge Dodgers, who will lead it off with Mari Wills. Mari Wills betting 218, has one home run this year. The pitch to Wills, fly ball to center field. Wilson to his right, gets under that one for the first out. Matt Kemp, the last batter for the Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers in their batting lineup, batting 267 this year and seven home runs. Here's the pitch to Kemp. And this is going to get into center field. Oh, a liner to Wilson, who's actually able to get to that in time and make the grab. Great play by Wilson for the second out. Looked like it was going to be a base hit, but he was able to get to that ball. As we go to Sam Crawford, the top of the lineup for Tampa Bay. Here is the 101 pitch, excuse me, the 01 pitch to Crawford. High pop up into right. Uh, foul territory. Pujols will get to that one. Makes a fantastic running play to get to that in time for the third out. We're going to the top of four. We're going to see Simmons, Calavito, and Zobrist for the Canada A's who still lead 2-0 over the Deluge Dodgers. Tanana fires to Simmons. It's a grounder to Crawford. He'll pick it up. Covered the bag himself. That's a three unassisted. Calavito, who's one for one. It's a fly ball on the field. Baylor back towards the fence. It's going to get over his head, off the fence. Calavito into second, walks into second. It's his second double today, his 23rd of the season. So Canada A's have a runner on second now with only one out as Ben Zobrist steps up to the plate. Here's the pitch to Zobrist and a fly ball into left field. But this time Baylor's going to get under this one. For the out, Calavito back to tag up. The oh. throw to third. Madlock tags him in time for the third out. Canada A's committed the error of making the third out on third base. And they're going to go down, unable to score after that double. We go to the bottom of four for the Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers. Batters two, three, and four. Bill Madlock, who just tagged out. 
the runner is leading it off. And this is going to be a high fly ball into center field. Wilson to his right. Gets under that one for the first out. Benji Molina. He's one for one. Here's the pitch to Molina. This another fly ball into Wilson uh, into center field. Wilson back to his right again. We'll make the second out. And that'll bring up Bobby Gritch. Bobby Gritch with a 2-1 pitch. This is going to get into center field. This will get down in front of Wilson. Gritch reaches on a single. So Frank Howard now comes in with a runner on first and two outs. And Gritch is off. Here's a Howard a grounder to Smalley. Smalley throws it over to Sobris to get the lead runner for the third out. We go to the top of five. Canada two. Deluge Dodger zero. Clue, welcome to the park. All right. We've got Tanana to face off against Sandoval, who will lead it off for the Canada A's here in the top of five. A grounder to Gritch. It's going to be a close play. Nope, he makes it in plenty of time for the first out. Boyer, who's 0 for 1 tonight, goes down on strikes from Tanana. That's for the fourth strikeout for Tanana this evening. And now he's up against Roy Smalley. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Smalley. A big pop-up over uh, shortstop. Wills back to the grass, gets under that one for the third out. Once again, Canada goes down. 1-2-3. No score since the top of the first inning. We go to the bottom of five. Lescano, Baylor, and Wills all do up for Tampa. Here's the full count to Lescano, and he goes down on strikes. And that'll bring up Don Baylor. He's 0 for 1. Here's the pitch to Baylor. It's a grounder over the mound. Zobrist comes up to get that one near pitcher's mound, makes it. In time, fires over to Pujols for the second out. That brings up Mari Wills, who's also 0 for 1 tonight. And he goes down on strikes. So Tampa goes down 1, 2, 3. No runs, no hits. No errors committed by Canada. We go to the top of six. Canada with only four hits, but two runs. The Deluge Dodgers with two hits, no runs. No errors committed by either team. Canada has left one on base. And the Deluge Dodgers have left two. Wilson will lead it off the top of the lineup for Canada here in the top of six. He is 0 for 2, and he gets hit by the pitch. So Tanana walks Wilson with the by hitting him to lead off this inning as Al Kaline comes up to bat. He's 1 for 2. And Wilson is off and running. Molina will not even make the throw. Wilson just strolls into second base, his 21st stolen base of the year. So no outs. Runner on second. Now K-Line gets the 0-1 pitch, and this is a fly ball, deep fly ball into left center field. Baylor all the way back to the fence, gets under that in time. Wilson back to tag up, gets to third with no problem. Baylor just gets it back to the cutoff. So now the uh, Canada A's have that runner on third with only one out, and the hard-hitting Albert Pujols. But Pujols is hitless. He's 0-2 for so far to this evening. And they're just going to put him on. Tanana's not going to mess with him. The manager says, we're going to put Pools on and not take the chance. So now a double play will get Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers out of this inning without giving up any more runs. Simmons digs in. Tanana gets the call from Molina. Strike three. And Simmons goes down on strike. So big uh, out there for Tanana and the Tampa Bay Deluge Dodgers. Now they only need one out to get him out of this inning. Rocky Calavito, who's perfect so far tonight, two for two, doubled off the wall and then doubled off the wall. So he's doubled off the wall twice so far tonight. Here's his third at bat with runners on the corners. Tanana fires over to one to try and get Pujols, but Pujols will get back in time. Good evening, MV. Welcome to the park. All right, Tanana to Calavito. It's a grounder to Wills. It's short. He's going to get it to Gritch at second. That will get Pujols out, and that'll be the third out. So the Deluge Dodgers dodged a bullet and was able to get out of the inning without giving up any runs. We go to the bottom of six, where we'll see Kemp. And then we're going to wrap back around to the top of the lineup for Tampa, Crawford and Madlock. Kemp 
takes the 0-2 pitch, and he Come goes down on. on strikes. That's the fifth strikeout so far in this game for Pete Alexander. Crawford, who's 0-2, digs in, looks for the pitch. A hard grounder to Smalley. It's short. He has to go back towards the grass to get it. Fires in time to Pujols for the second out. Bill Madlock, who's 0 for 2. Tampa trying to do anything they can to get some hits. And this is going to be a grounder to Zobrist at second to Pujols in time for the third out. We go to the top of seven. We're going to see Zobrist, Sandoval, and Boyer for the Canada A's. So Tanana to face off against Zobrist. Zobrist 0 for 2. There's the 0-2 pitch. It's a grounder to Madlock at third. He fires across the diamond in time. Crawford gloves it for the first out. Pablo Sandoval, who's over two, takes the pitch from Tanana. And this is going to get into left field. Past Wills, a single for Sandoval. That's the fifth hit so far this in this game for the Canada A's. They have a runner on first now as Ken Boyer steps, in, steps into the uh, box. Sandoval not taking a huge lead. Tanana fires to Boyer. Tanana will field this one. It comes back towards the mound. Gets it to Gritch in time at second to get the lead runner. Fires over to one, but nowhere near in time. Boyer reaches on the fielder's choice. Two outs now for Roy Smalley. He's batting ninth in the lineup for the Canada A's. He's 0 for 2. Boyer on first, not taking a very big lead. But Boyer looked like he was off and running. It's a high fly ball into right field. Kemp. Tracks to his right, gets under that, makes the third out. We go to the seventh inning stretch. So we're back to the bottom of the seventh inning for Tampa, who's due up. They're going to have Molina, followed by Gritch, and then Howard. No score since the top of the first inning, where Canada scored two to take the lead. Tampa, with only two hits so far in the game, looking to try and get on this board on the board to close up this gap. Molina, who is one for two so far, takes the pitch from Alexander. And he'll fall that, foul that one back, and he's going to get another chance at this. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Alexander. Fly ball into right field. This one's high. This one's deep, and this is gone. A solo shot from Benji Molina cuts the lead in half. 324-footer over the right field fence. Home run number three for Benji Molina on the year. So Canada now only trails by one here in the bottom of seven. Bobby Gritch, who is also one for two, singled in his last plate appearance, takes the pitch from Alexander and gets the walk. That's Alexander's first walk of the night. And that'll bring up Frank Howard with no outs and a runner on first. Gritch, no threat to steal. Howard takes the pitch. Fly ball in the center field. Wilson to his right. He'll get that. And Gritch will have to hold on one. Sisto Lescano, who's 0 for 2 tonight, with facing one out. And this is going to be a hard grounder to Boyer at, at third. He fires over to Zobrist. Zobrist fires to Pujols. It's a double play to end the inning. But Tampa does get one run off of one solo shot home run. And now only trail by one going into the top of eight. Four Canada A's, Willie Wilson, their leadoff batter in their lineup who's 0 for 2, full count, and he goes down on strikes to for the first out as Al Kaline, who's 1 for 3, steps in. Tanana fires to Kaline, and he's going to get a walk, and I believe that was the yeah, second walk issued by Tanana, who's also struck out 6 so far this evening, now faces off against the very dangerous Albert Pujols. Pujols has 26 home runs so far this year. Has that run? K-Line's off and running. Molina will fire to Gritch at second, but K-Line 
is under the tag. Is only his second stolen base for the year. So we'll see if Tanana is going to continue to face off against Pujols or just put him on base. And they did issue the walk. So Pujols with another walk tonight. An intentional walk. Now Tanana can face off against Simmons. Once again, a double play will get them out of the inning. So to Simmons, this is going to get into left field. Drops before Baylor can get to it. K-line to third. He's rounding and takes off home. Baylor only gets it back to Madlock at third. So a run comes across for Canada. And that negates that run that Tampa just got off the solo shot home run. Simmons at first. Pujols at second. Calavito up to the plate to bat. Batting uh, two for three so far tonight. Here's the 3-0 pitch. And he'll get walked. So Tanana... Now, putting himself in even deeper trouble with only one out. Bases loaded. Ben Zobrist. Ben Zobrist is hitless. And Molina's going to go out and talk to Tanana, try and calm him down a little bit. Here's the pitch from Tanana. Fly ball into center field. This should be deep enough for Pujols to tag. He does. Kemp throws it into Wills at cutoff. Another run comes across. Tampa now trailing the Canada A's 4-1. to one. Pablo Sandoval, who's one for three, facing two outs with runners on first and second. And we're getting a call to the bullpen. Walter Johnson. He's been in 50, he's been in 23 games this year, 58 in the third innings, 48 hits, 22 earned runs. He's struck out 50, walked 13, and given up six home runs. He's got a 339 ERA, two wins, three losses, and two saves. The pitch to Sandoval, and he goes down on strikes. That'll end that inning, but Canada scores two more off of one hit. No errors were committed by Tampa, but they now trail by three here in the bottom of eight, and they'll see batters seven, eight, and nine. That's going to be Don Baylor starting it off for Tampa. He's 0 for 2 tonight. And it's a big fly ball in the center field, but Wilson, to his right, gets under that for the first out. Mari Wills, who's 0 for 2. And he's going to try and bunt his way onto the base. Alexander will come off the mound to field and field the ball. He gets it to Pujols in time for the out. So Matt Kemp, 0 for 2 tonight, and now facing two outs. Takes the pitch from Three, Alexander, two. and he goes down on strikes to end that inning. Tampa goes down one, two, three. No runs and no hits. We go to the top of nine. Canada uh, leading four to one. Canada with six hits so far in this game. Six left on base. Tampa with three hits and two left on. No errors have been committed by either team so far. The pitch to Boyer. Big fly ball into Whoa. foul territory down left field. That'll get into the stands. Boyer will get another chance. It's the full count to Boyer. And this is going to be into left field past Wills at short. That's a leadoff single for Boyer here in the top of nine. Roy Smalley will step in. No outs, runner on first. It's a grounder to Gritch at second. He fires over to Crawford to get the batter. Boyer able to get to second. So with a runner on second base, Wilson... Uh, Willie Wilson, excuse me. Willie Wilson will step up with one out. 0 for 3 so far tonight. And it's a grounder to Wills at short. He's going to fire over to Crawford in time to get Wills, I'm sorry, Wilson out. Boyer will remain at second base. So now with two outs, Al Kaline steps up, batting one for three tonight. And fly ball into center field. Kemp back and to the right. Gets under that one in the third out. So no runs, one hit for Canada A's. We go to the bottom of nine. Canada, uh, the Deluge Dodgers trailing by three. Crawford, who's at the top of the lineup for Tampa Bay, will lead it off. So Tampa needs to go deep in their lineup here. Try and get some of these runs back. It's their last chance. And this is going to start it off. It's a hit into left field. Drops well before Calavito can get to it. Beautiful lineup by Cal Crawford to lead off. Uh, this inning with a single Madlock comes up 
He is hitless tonight. 0 for 3. And Mark Teixeira is going to come in and pinch hit for Bill Madlock. So Alexander will fire over to 1. Crawford back in plenty of time. Mark Teixeira, who's got a 274 average, two home runs so far this year, and 14 RBIs. No outs. Crawford with a huge lead on one. Possible steal attempt. He does not. Teixeira, though, with a deep fly ball in the center field. Wilson back towards the fence. He gets under that one. That's the first out. Crawford holds at first base. Benji Molina, who hit the solo shot home run his last at bat, comes in and faces off against Alexander. Alexander Ooh. fires over to one, but Crawford back in plenty of time. Alexander with 103 pitches so far this game. He's struck out six and walked one. He's also allowed one home run. Here's the pitch to Molina. This is going to be a grounder to Zobrist to Smalley at second, and he'll fire to Pujols. The double play will end the game. Canada goes down four to one. I'm sorry, Deluge Dodgers. Tampa goes down four to one to the Canada A's. Let's take a quick look at the box score. Tampa with seven hits and four runs, no errors. Tampa four hits, one run, no errors. Uh, Colavito for Canada went two for three. That was their best hitting. Uh, Tampa had uh, Molina go two for four with the solo shot home run. Alexander went a full uh, the distance, nine innings, only gave up four hits and one earned run. Walked one, struck out six. The MVP for the game goes to Pete Alexander, of course, who pitched fantastic game for Canada. All right. We are off to the next game. And excuse me, I had to get a little drink there. All right, um, our next game is going to be the D-Gens at Lehigh. So let's get to, let's autoplay a few games. Hadley Lake at Edmonton, Hadley Lake 4, Edmonton 1. Chief Bender gets his second win of the season. Oswalt now 3-11 and 11 for the year. Ty Cobb goes 3-4, for four, by the way, with a triple and two doubles. All right, Vegas at Lancaster. Vegas drops to Lancaster, 4-3. to three. Leonard gets his third one. He's 3-0 and on the season. Berlin at Manchester. Manchester with a big win, much needed win. 5-3 to three over Berlin. Webb gets his ninth win. Perez gets his second loss. Paul Molitor went 2-4 for four with three RBIs and a triple. And we're going to go off now and play D-Gens at Lehigh. We're at Wrigley Field, the home field for the Lehigh Lizards. Lehigh has won six straight now. Red Ames gets a start for DGENs. He's made three starts on the year. He's four and five with an ERA of 549. This is his first start against Lehigh. Max Lanier is on the mound for Lehigh. He's got 17 starts, 11 and five record with an ERA of 279. It's his third start against the DGENs. He's 1 and 0 against them with a 255 ERA. Lehigh left fielder George Foster is riding a 12-game hitting streak. We'll see how if that continues. It's 80 degrees with the wind speed of 16 miles per hour right to left. Play ball! All right. The lineup for the D-Gens. Tommy Holmes batting first. Following him is Keith Hernandez batting third. Rogers Hornsby. He'll be followed by David Ortiz, the designated hitter. Batting fifth, Nap Lajoy. Dave Kingman batting sixth. Mike Lowell batting seventh. Batting eighth will be Vada Pinson. 
And to clean up the lineup, Yadier Molina batting ninth. For the Lehigh Lizards, George Foster is in left field. Willie Mays in center field. And Dixie Walker is in right field. Cecil Cooper at first. Craig Biggio at second. Rico Petroselli will be the shortstop. Ken Caminiti at third. Russell Martin will be catching. And he'll be receiving the pitches from Max Lanier, who's got 17 starts, 142 innings, 110 hits, 44 earned runs, only five home runs given up. He's struck out 125, walked 58. He's won 11 so far, lost five this year, and has an ERA of 279. The first batter he'll face off against will be Tommy Holmes, who comes in with a 259 average and 18 home runs to lead it off for the D-Gens. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Holmes, and this is going to be into right field. Walker has to run up to get under this one and makes the first out. Keith Hernandez, first baseman for the D-Gens with a 255 batting average and five home runs. Full count to Hernandez, grounder to Cooper. That's a three unassisted for the second out. Roger Hornsby. Batting a 310 average this year and 14 home runs. Now up for the D-Gens. Two outs. Here's a 3-0 pitch. Ball. And Take Hornsby gets the walk. So Lanier gives up his first walk of the game. Now facing off against David Ortiz, who's batting 282, 19 home runs, 54 RBIs as Hornsby stands on first. Hornsby's off and running. Martin, I'm sorry, uh, Ortiz gets a nice shot to the right field wall. Hornsby rounds third. He comes home. Ortiz with a stand-up double. His 14th of the season. Walker made a poor play on that ball. He read it wrong and allowed that ball to get by him to the wall. So a RBI double for Ortiz puts the D-Gens on the board first. They lead 1-0 over the Lehigh Lizards. Napoleon Lajouet batting 231, 12 home runs and 39 RBIs. He's facing two outs with a runner on second. The one two pitch, and he'll go down on strikes to end the inning. So one hit, one run for the D Gens. We go to the bottom of one for the Lehigh Lizards. Their lineup looks like this Craig Biggio will lead it off. Cecil Cooper batting second. Designated hitter Jeff Bagwell batting third. Cleanup, George Foster. Center fielder Willie Mays will be batting fifth. Rico Petroselli batting sixth. Ken Caminiti batting seventh. In the eighth spot will be Dixie Walker. And rounding out the batting order, Russell Martin. On defense for the D-Gens, we've got Dave Kingman in left field. Vada Pinson in center field. Tommy Holmes is in right field. Keith Hernandez is at first. Nap Lajoy at second. Rogers Hornsby at the shortstop. Mike Lowell at third. Yadier Molina is behind the plate catching for Red Ames. Red Ames comes in with three starts, 80 and a third oh. innings pitched, 92 hits. He's given up 49 earned runs, 10 home runs. Struck out 32, walked 38. He's got a 549 ERA. Four wins, five losses, and he's uh, on the mound facing off a very tough, hard-hitting Lehigh Lizard team. Craig Biggio, to lead off, batting 240 this season, has no home runs yet this year. Biggio, grounder the third, Lowell, cr fires across the diamond. It's going to be close, Boom. but just in time to Keith Hernandez for the first out. And that brings up Cecil Cooper. Cecil Cooper with a 303 average and 12 home runs. The first pitch from Ames to Cooper. Hornsby will come up, field it cleanly. Boom. Throws to Hernandez, but not in time. Cooper beats it out for an infield single. That brings up Jeff Bagwell, who's batting 287, 19 home runs, 54 RBIs. Cooper not taking a very big lead off of first. Doesn't appear he's going to steal. The 0-2 pitch to Bagwell. Ames off the mound, fire, gets the ball, fires to Nap Lashaway, who's covering second. He then fires over to first. 
It's a double play, an amazing double play by Red Ames uh, to get to that ball and make the and get it to second in time. So down go the Lehigh Lizards. One hit, but no runs. They trail oh, uh, one nothing as we go to the top of two. For the top uh, here for the DGens, we're going to say Kingman, Lowell, and Pinson. Dave Kingman. He's only got a 169 average so far this year. And he does have six home runs. He's got 23 hits. Six of those have been out of the park. This one is going to get over Petroselli's head into left field for a single. So Kingman, who was struggling with his batting average, comes in and gets a hit. Mike Lowell with a 266 average, five home runs, 41 RBIs. Kingman on first, not taking a very big lead. And, wow, what a shot by Lowell. This is going to get past Walker once again to the fence, to the wall, excuse Ooh. me. Walker picks it up, throws it a second, but Lowell gets there in time, his 19th double of the season. Dave Kingman will hold up at third base. So no outs for the D-Gens. They have runners on second and third. Vada Pinson batting 237, 14 home runs, and 35 RBIs has a chance to add to the D-Gen's lead. The 0-2 pitch to Pinson. This is going to be deep enough to Walker in right field for Kingman to tag up and come home. Lowell will stay at second. Fantastic play for Dixie Walker to get to that because that was a deep shot, but deep enough for the RBI sack fly. Yadier Molina comes up. He is ninth in the lineup for the D-Gen's. 244 average. Two home runs, 19 RBIs. Mike Lowell still stands at second. Lanier fires to Ball, Molina. Ball. And Take Molina draws the walk. Four straight balls from Lanier. Now runners on first and second with only one out as Tommy Holmes, the leadoff batter for the D-Gens, comes back up. 43 RBIs so far this year. And this is going to get into center field. That's going to get another run across. It's a double. What a shot to center field. And then he hoofs it out with his speed to get a double on that and knock in the run. So DGENs now score two so far in this inning. Lead by three. Keith Hernandez, who has 32 RBIs this year, steps up with runners on second and third. One out. The 1-1 pitch. And this is going to be it past Cooper at first into right field for a single. Molina will come home. Holmes will run to third. So runners on the corners. DGENs with only one out. Two men on. Rogers Hornsby, who's got uh, 47 RBI so far this year. He was walked his last at bat to Hornsby. This is going to get past Bijo over Bijo's head at second. That's going to knock in an RBI. That's an RBI single for Hornsby. So DGENs now score four here in the top of, sec uh, top of two. Lead the Lizards 5 nothing. Ortiz, who's already 0 for 1, I'm sorry, 1 for 1 in this game, and 55 RBIs, comes up, and whoa, we're going to quick call to the bullpen by the Lehigh Lizards as Shane Reynolds runs out and takes the mound. He's been 11 games so far this year, 34 innings pitched. He's allowed 46 hits, 19 earned runs. He struck out 15, walked 10. And giving up seven home runs. He's got a 5.03 ERA, one win, no losses, and no saves. Coming in in a tight spot here, Ortiz, a grounder to Petroselli. He throws to Biggio. It's a 6.43 double play to end the inning, but not before the D-Gens do tons of damage, scoring five runs. I'm sorry, four runs off of five hits. We go to the bottom of two. We'll see Foster lead it off for the Lehigh Lizards. Foster with a 245 batting average and 21 home runs already this year. Takes the pitch from Ames. This is going to be deep and hard and high and gone over left field wall for George Foster. It's his 22nd home run of the year, and he knocked that one 372 feet over left field wall. So that uh, bring, gets one run back for the Lehigh Lizards, but they still got the work cut out for them as they still trail by four. 
Ames to Mays. Mays with a big fly ball into left field, but this one Kingman's going to get to near the track for the second out. And that'll bring up uh, Rico Petroselli, who's batting 254 this season and 14 home runs. One out for the Lizards. The 1 2 pitch. A shot into left field all the way to the wall. Kingman gives chase. Petroselli rounds first, heads to second to throw to Lajoy. Not in time. Petroselli gets under the tag. It's his 16th double of the year. So Lehigh Lizards have that runner on second base now as Ken Caminiti comes up, batting 202. He's got 30 RBIs, six home runs so far this season. The pitch to Caminiti. Fly ball into shallow right field. Holmes will come up and get that one. Petroselli had to run back to second. Not deep enough for him to tag and get to three. So Petroselli remained on second for Dixie Walker, who's got two outs now on him. 288 average. Four home runs, 16 RBIs. It's the pitch to Walker. And this is going to get into the stands down third baseline for a foul ball. Walker gets another chance. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Ames to walk uh, to Walker. Fly ball into right field. Holmes near the foul line. Makes the third out. The Lizards get one run back off of two hits. No errors were committed by the D-Gens. We go to the top of three. Where Lajoie will lead it off for the D-Gens. Napoleon Lajoie, 0 for 1 tonight. And it's a hard grounder to Cooper. He'll scoop it up, run back to the bag. That's the first out. Dave Kingman, who's one for one, singled his last at bat, goes down on strikes. Big fastball there from Reynolds. Swing and a miss for Kingman. Mike Lowell, who had a beautiful hit uh, his last at bat, set a double down the right field line. Takes the pitch. It's past Reynolds at the mound. Biggio with a fantastic diving stop to get to that ball in the dirt, is able to turn and then fire it to Cooper uh, for the third out. We're going to go to the bottom of three. For the Lehigh Lizards still trail by four. Martin, the last batter for the Lehigh Lizards in their lineup, due up with a 174 average, six home runs. The pitch to Martin. Fly ball in left field. Kingman takes a couple steps to his right, and he'll make that grab for the first out. Back to the top of the lineup for Lehigh, Craig Biggio. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's a grounder to Napoleon Lajoie. He picks it up, gets it to Hernandez in plenty of time for the second out. Cecil Cooper, who's one for one. He singled an infield single. Hornsby was unable to get to that ball in time. Here's the pitch from Ames to Cooper. And this is going to be a pop-up behind the, the plate. Molina gets under this one. Makes the third out. We go to the top of four. The D-Gens still lead the Lizards 5-1. to one. Vada Pinson, who got uh, he had a sack fly his last at bat. And this one is going to get a liner. It's a liner to Biggio for the first out. Yadier Molina, he was walked his last at bat. Oh, oh. And he's been walked again. That's his second walk of the night. And that is Reynolds' first walk tonight. Reynolds now faces off against Tommy Holmes, who's one for two this evening. And this is going to be into left field for a single. Molina to second base. That brings up Keith Hernandez with one out on him. Runners at first and second. Keith Hernandez is one for two tonight. Strike three. But he's going to go down on strikes. He did not swing at the curveball, had him fooled. He hits the corner, and he goes down for the second out. Rogers Hornsby, who's one for one. He was walked his first at bat, then he lined a single to right center. Here's the pitch to Hornsby, and it's a grounder to Petroselli at short. He's going to fire all the way across to first in time for the third out. So the D-Gens with one hit, no runs. We go to the bottom of four. Bagwell leads it off for the Lehigh Lizards. The first pitch to Bagwell. Grounded to Hornsby. Over to Hernandez. That's the first out. Foster, who's one for one tonight. He hit the solo shot homer. 
uh, down the left field line. And this is a grounder. Lajoie picks this up. Hernandez will glove that one for the second out. Willie Mays, 0 for 1 tonight. He's going to get the free pass from uh, Red Ames. Red Ames issued his first walk of the night. As Rico Petroselli digs in. He's 1 for 1 tonight. Ames gets the call from Molina. He fires over to 1, but Mays back in plenty of time. He's safe. So Mays takes a nice little lead off of the first as Ames delivers his first pitch to Petroselli. And it's a grounder towards first. Hernandez will pick it up. Ames covers the bag. That's the third out. That'll end the inning. We go to the top of five where the DJs still lead five to one. David Ortiz leads it off for the DJs. He's one for two so far. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Ortiz. Hard grounder to Cooper at first. He'll scoop it up, run it back to the bag in time for the first out. Nap Lajoie, who's 0 for 2. Strike three. Goes down on strikes. And that'll take us to Dave Kingman, who's 1 for 2 this evening. And he gets his second hit of the night. This is going to be into left field for a single. That'll bring up Mike Lowell with two outs. And a runner on first. Mike Lowell also won for two tonight. Kingman doesn't, be a, doesn't appear to be a threat to steal. And Lowell with a hard shot to Petroselli. He fires DeBigio to get the lead runner for the third out. We go to the bottom of five. The Lehigh Lizards will see Caminiti, Walker, and Martin all do up in this half of the inning. Caminiti 0 for 1. Here's a 3-1 pitch, and he gets walked. So Red Ames issues his second walk of the night. A leadoff walk to start off the inning as Dixie Walker comes up. The pitch to Walker. Fly ball into right field. Deep into right field. Holmes all the way back to the Ivy. Makes the grab. And Caminiti has to hold at one. Russell Martin now up. He has 20 RBI so far this year. Caminiti still on first. Not taking out much of a lead at all. Martin with a shot down third. Looked like it was foul, but the umpire called it fair. Lowell fires to Lajoie, covering the bag at second for the for the leadoff runner. And then Lajoie fires to Hernandez, but not in time. Martin reaches on a uh, fielder's choice. As Craig Biggio, the leadoff batter for the Lehigh Lizards lineup. Steps up. He's 0 for 2. Martin at first. Two outs. Ames fires over to 1, but Martin is back in plenty of time. He wasn't even taking that big of a lead. So interesting choice to try and get the pickoff there. Ames fires. Biggio with a hard hit into right field. This is going to get all the way to the wall. Holmes will give chase. Martin rounds second. Biggio off to 2. Martin rounds third. He's going to make it home. Holmes will fire into second, but Biggio was just standing there watching him throw the ball. It's his 18th double of the season. He also picked up another RBI as the Lehigh Lizards cut the lead down to three. Cecil Cooper, one for two. Beats you at second, two outs. 0-2 pitch, he'll go down on strikes. So Red Ames able to get out of the inning after giving up one, uh, one run and one hit. We go to the top of six. For the D-Gens, we're going to see batters 8-9 and then back around to 1. The pitch from Reynolds to uh, Pinson into left field for a single, a leadoff single for the D-Gens. Trying to get that run back that they just gave up. Yadier Molina comes up. He's been walked twice already this game. Pinson at first with a huge lead. He does not steal, but Yadier Molina bangs one into shallow left center. Foster has to run up almost to the dirt to get that one. But he gets there in time. Pinson holds it one. One out. Tommy Holmes is two for three the night. He's doubled uh, in the second, then grounded a single in the fourth. Pinson is off and running. Martin will throw. Boom. Petroselli covering the bag. Pinson under the tag. Stolen base number 13 this year for Vada Pinson. So now the runner on second and one out for Tommy Holmes. The 0-1 pitch from Reynolds. 
Fly ball into right field. Walker has to go back. He'll get it. Pinson tries to tag, but it wasn't deep enough. He does not go. go. He holds it second. With two outs now, up comes Keith Hernandez. Batting one for three. Grounded a sec, uh, single in the second inning. This is a grounder. Petroselli will come up and field that one at short. He fires to Cooper for the third out. So the D-Gens get a hit, but no runs. No errors by the Lizards. We go to the bottom of six. Bagwell, Foster, and Mays all do up for the Lizards. Here's the pitch to Bagwell. Hornsby covers some ground. Throws over. Oh, it was a throwing error by Hornsby. Hernandez unable to scoop that one up. Bagwell rounds one because the ball got past Hernandez. And Bagwell gets all the way to second on that error by Hornsby. So with no outs, George Foster up. Already has a solo shot home run so far in this game. And a runner on second with no outs. Ames delivers to Foster. It's a grounder. Lajaway makes a fantastic play on that ball. Fires to one to get Foster out. But Bagwell is able to advance to third base. Nap Lajaway with his 19th great play of the season to get that out. Willie Mays now comes up. He is 0 for 1. He's been walked once already. Runner on third. One out. Ball, Mays ball. gets walked. That puts runners on the corners for the Lizards and for Rico Petroselli, who has one out against him. Red Ames looking for a ground ball double play here to get them out of the inning. Ames fires over to one. Mays back in plenty of time, but he holds a little closer now as Petroselli waits for the pitch. This is the one-two pitch. A grounder to Lowell at third. He's going to fire to Lajoie at second. He does not fire in time. He doesn't even throw to first for the double play. So the runner will come home and score the run. The Lizards now only trailing by two here in the bottom of six. Two outs for Ken Caminiti. With Petroselli standing on first base. Petroselli's off. Look like a hit and run. Over Lajoie's head at second. Holmes will feel that one in right field. Petroselli rounds two and heads it heads to third. So now the Lizards have runners on the corners for Dixie Walker and two outs. Dixie Walker 0 for 2. Here's the pitch to Walker. Into right field. This is going to get to the wall. Holmes will give chase. Walker rounds second. Kamini rounds third. Two runs come in. And just like that, the game is all tied up. Wow. So a big inning here by the Lizards to tie this game up. Now, all knotted at five. Still two outs for the Lizards. Walker standing on second base. Russell Martin 0 for 2. Ames delivers to Martin. It's a grounder to Lowell. Lowell makes a fantastic play. Throws it over to Hernandez finally to get the third out. But the Lehigh Lizards score three runs in this inning. Off of two hits and one error committed by Roger Hornsby to start that rally going. For the Lizards, we go to the top of seven. We're going to see Hornsby, Ortiz, and Lajoie. Hornsby's hoping to make up for that uh, error he made as the Lehigh Lizards go to their bullpen. Dave Veers comes in. 17 games so far this year, 18 and two-thirds inning pitched. He's given up 32 hits, 18 earned runs. Ten of those were home runs. He struck out 12, though. And only walked two. He's got an 868 ERA, three wins, three losses, no saves. To face off against Hornsby. Hornsby with a high fly pop up. All kinds of people going after this one. And that somehow drops in between four different fielders who all went for the ball. Mays came from center field, Walker from right field, Cooper from first, and Biggio all go after that ball. And that ball just drops in between all of them as they all look dumbfounded at each other. A hit by Hornsby. So Hornsby now on first as David Ortiz comes up. David Ortiz had a double off the wall in the first inning. Hornsby with a nice lead off of first. 
Hornsby's off and running. Martin fires to Petroselli, but Hornsby is in there safe. It's his ninth stolen base of the year. Ortiz digs back in. Martin gets the call from, I'm sorry, Ver Veris gets the call from Martin. The 1-0 pitch to Ortiz. A pop-up into right field. Biggio tracks way back to get to that one for the first out. Hornsby, of course, has to hold it second. Lajoie, who's 0 for 3 tonight. He has 39 RBIs this year. And this is going to get over Biggio's head to right field. Laj uh, Hornsby rounds third and comes home. Lajoie, with an RBI single, gives the D-Gens a lead again. Dave Kingman, he's two for three. Singled in the second and struck out in the third, then singled again in the fifth. Good. Veras th fires over to Lajoie, but Lajoie, I'm sorry, fires over to first, but Lajoie gets back in plenty of time. Still taking a nice lead off of first base. Kingman gets the pitch. It was a pitch out, uh, but Lajoie was going nowhere. So a 1-0 pitch. A uh, one-out count, rather, on Kingman. One out. Here's the pitch to Kingman. This is going to get into left field. That's a single. That's going to drop before Foster can get to it. Lajoie to second. The third hit today for Dave Kingman with one out. The D-Gens trying to answer all those runs that they just gave up in the bottom of six. Mike Lowell, who's one for three. Runners on first and second. Martin will go out and speak to Varus. The pitch to Lowell. Big high fly ball to left field. Foster is going to get under that one. Lajoie tags. Heads to third. Foster fires. Not in time. Lajoie make it, makes it to third safely. Kingman stays at first. Two outs now for the D-Gens. Vada Pinson, who's one for two, singled his last at bat. The pitch to Pinson. Big fly ball to right field. Mays gives hard chase to this one. Covers a lot of ground. We go to the seventh inning stretch after that out. I see Mike came into the, into the field, uh, into the park just in time to see his team take the lead back. They were able to score one run off of those three hits. No errors committed by Lehigh. We go to the bottom of seven. Biggio will lead it off for the Lizards. Ames delivers to Biggio, a grounder. Hornsby comes up, scoops it up, fires to one. In plenty of time for the first out. Cecil Cooper now up. He's one for three tonight. The 0-2 pitch. Oh, a shot liner to Hernandez. He gloves that one for the second out. Bagwell, who's hitless so far in the game. Now up for the Lizards. The pitch. Fly ball into one, deep left field. This one's high. This one's deep. This one is off the wall. Kingman will grab it off of the bounce. A double, number 14 for Jeff Bagwell. As George Foster comes in with a runner on second and two outs, Foster with that shot, solo shot home run down left field line earlier in the game. The pitch to Foster, he's going to get walked. So Ames puts another runner on. It's two on first and second for Willie Mays. Willie Mays is 0 for 1. He's been walked twice already this game. The pitch to Mays. This is going to be a fly ball in left field. This one looks pretty deep. This one looks pretty high. And this one looks gone. It is gone for Willie Mays. Three RBI shot over left field. 365 feet. That's home run number 25. Lehigh Lizards now lead by two in the bottom of seven. Rico Petroselli with a grounder. I mean, a hard shot into left center field. That's a single. Ames still on the mound with 111 pitches. 
has given up nine hits, two home runs, four walks, and has only struck out one. And the manager has not pulled him yet. Ames will deliver to Molina. This is going to get in the right field all the way to the wall once again past Holmes. Petroselli around second. Caminiti off, to, Caminiti off to second. The throw to Hornsby. And Petroselli rounds third to come home from the throw to second. That's the 12th double of the year for Caminiti. An RBI double on that. And now the Lizards are up by three in the bottom of seven. Dixie Walker, who's one for three. And a runner on second. This is a grounder to Hernandez. He'll pick that up, run it back to the bag in plenty of time for the third out. But the damage is done. Four runs off of four hits for the Lizards. They now lead by three over the D-Gens. Yadier Molina is due up for the D-Gens to lead it off. Twelve hits for the D-Gens so far in this game. Six runs, one error, eight left on base. The Lizards have 10 hits, 9 runs, and 5 left on base. No errors. Yadier Molina. Oh, we've got some defensive adjustments coming in here for Lehigh. Jim Davenport will play third base. Ozzie Smith will play shortstop. Sam Rice will play right field. And Ted Abernathy is coming in from the bullpen to pitch. So Ted Abernathy, who's pitched 25 and two-third Innings in 18 games, has given up 34 hits, 18 earned runs, six home runs, struck out 12, walked 11, 631 ERA, two wins, one loss, no saves. He'll come in to face off against the leadoff batter, Yadier Molina, who's 0 for 1. And this is going to be into left field for a base hit over Smith's head. Nice shot by Molina to get a leadoff single. We go back to the top of the lineup for the D-Gens. Holmes, who's 2 for 4. He flied to right center, then he doubled in the second, and then grounded a single in the fourth, and then flied to right again in the sixth with the runner on first. Takes the 2-2 pitch. This could get past Martin, so Molina able to get all the way to second off the pass ball. They're going to score that a wild pitch for Abernathy. So now Molina's on second. No outs. Holmes with a full count. And he'll get walked. So Abernathy puts Holmes on. So now two runs on. The tying run is Keith Hernandez at the plate. Keith Hernandez is one for four. Grounded a single in the second. Here's the pitch to Hernandez. This is going to be a pop-up behind the plate. This looks like it might get into the stands. It does not. Martin was able to get to that for the out. Big play there by Martin. To get to that ball before it got went into foul territory. That brings up Rogers Hornsby, though, who's two for three. And he's got 48 RBIs so far this year. He could tie this game up with one hit. This one's going to be a high fly ball into left field. This one's really high and really deep, and it is gone for Rogers Hornsby. And now the D-Gens come back and tie the game up. Three RBI shot for Hornsby, 376 footer. His 15th home run of the season. What a wild game we've got here. That brings up David Ortiz, who's one for four. And just like that, they're going back to the bullpen again in this inning. This time, Hank Aguirre is, co uh, is coming into pitch. He's got eight and a third innings, five hits, two earned runs. He's walked seven and only struck out two. He's got a 216 ERA, one win, no losses, no saves. So I don't know if this is the type of person you want to be going to your bullpen for, but it's a grounder to first. Aguirre will cover the plate, uh, cover the bag. Cooper will fire it over to him, and the pitcher will make that out for the second out. Nap Napoleon Lajoie, one for four tonight. Two outs for the D-Gens. Here's the pitch, and it's a grounder to Smith at short. He's going to fire to Cooper, who gloves it for the third out. But three runs come across for the D-Gens off of two hits, and no errors committed by the uh, Lizards. Game all knotted up nine to nine here in the bottom of eight. And we will see batter number nine, Martin, lead it off for the Lizards. The pitch to Martin. Big fly ball left field. Kingman 
Has to run up to get to that one, and he does. We go back to the top of the lineup. Craig Biggio for the Lehigh Lizards. Here's the pitch to Biggio. Oh, a big shot in the right, over Lajoie's head at second in the right center field. That's a single for Biggio. Cecil Cooper now comes up. He's one for four tonight. He's got 39 RBIs. And he uh, aims, fires over to one. Biggio back in plenty of time. Ames still on the mound with 126 pitches. Delivers. Biggio off and running. This is a fly ball pop-up, rather, to shortstop Hornsby. Biggio is off and running. Has to retreat back to first. That's the second out now for the Lizards. And that brings up Jeff Bagwell, who's one for four tonight. Biggio with a huge lead at one. Ames will fire over to first. Biggio back in plenty of time. Now he's not taking such a big lead. The pitch to Bagwell. And this is going to get into center field. Veda Pinson will pick this one up off the ground. Biggio to third. Pinson just covered it and throws it back at the work to get cut off. Runners now at first and third for the Lehigh Lizards. With two outs as George Foster steps back up to the plate. He's already got one home run so far in the game. To Foster. Fly ball in the center field. Pinson has to go way back on this one. No, it's off the wall. A two RBI double for George Foster, his 11th of the season. And two more runs come across here in the bottom of eight. And a game that looked like the Deejans had total control of the first five innings has just exploded here for both teams. And Deejans now lead again by two. Willie Mays, who's one for two. And two outs, gets the free pass from Ames. They're not going to mess with him. They're going to see Ozzie Smith, who came in as a defensive adjustment in the last inning. Ozzie Smith with a fantastic .067 batting average and two RBIs this year. Takes the pitch, and it's a grounder to Hornsby. Hornsby fires to Keith Hernandez at one. Smith is out, and his batting average just went down even farther. We go to the top of the ni uh, ninth inning. Degens now trailing by two, 11 to nine. They have three outs to get two runs back to try and extend this game. And we're going to have, now we've got another pitcher from the bullpen. This time Saito comes in, Saito. Let's take a quick look at him. He's got uh, seven games played, eight and two thirds innings, six hits, two runs, two earned runs. Excuse me, two home runs. 13 strikeouts, one walk. He's got a 208 ERA, two wins, one loss, and three saves. Take three. And he gets, it was a th uh, dropped third strike, and Martin will fire, pick it up and fire it to first in plenty of time to get the out for Kingman as Mike Lowell comes up one for four. Lowell with a big fly ball Lowell. into foul territory down third baseline into the stands. You'll get another chance at this. The one-two pitch to Lowell. And it's a grounder to Cooper at first. He'll pick it up, run it back to the bag for the second out. So the D-Gen's down to their last out. As Vada Pinson comes up to the, to the plate, batting one for three. And uh, this one's going to get into right field. A liner into right field. And Rice is unable to catch that in time. It's going to bounce right, right in front of his glove. That's a single for Vada Pinson. So the tying run is now at the plate. And that's Yadier Molina, who's one for two. And Saito will fire over to one. But Pinson back in plenty of time. Still taking a huge lead at first base. Molina waiting for the pitch. And it's a grounder to Davenport. That looked foul, but the umpire said it wasn't. Davenport fires across the diamond for the third out. The Lizards win 11-9 to over the D-Gens. That was a wild one. 15 hits for the D-Gens and nine runs, one error. 13 hits, 11 runs for Lehigh, no errors. And I'm not going to sit here and go over every, everything that happened. There was a lot. Some of the highlights includes Hornsby getting a, two, a, a big home run. Um, and for the Lizards, Foster and Mays both got big home runs.
The MVP is going to go to George Foster. And that was a heck of a game. So Lehigh improves their standings by one as DGens drops one. All right, we're going to autoplay a couple of games and go to the next day. Mid-Michigan beats Florence 4-3. to three. San Francisco drops to one to Cleveland, five to three. Dallas at Long Island, Long Island five, Dallas four. Liverpool at Hagerstown, Hagerstown with a big win over Liverpool, six to one. And St. Pete at Carpathian, St. Pete four, Carpathian two. Joe Iron Joe McGinnity. Drops his ninth game of the year. We're going to go to see uh, day two where we're going to see another game played. And we'll take a quick look at the standings in the win division. Chico's is still up by eight over Lehigh. Liverpool up by three and a half over Hagerstown. Mid-Michigan leads Hadley Lake by one. And Canada leads Lancaster by four. We'll run a couple of auto plays until we get to the next game that we're going to play. And so the first one is Vegas at Chicago. Chicago 8, Vegas 3. Saberhagen. Saberhagen with his first win of the year for comes in for Chicago. He's now 1-11. Drysdale drops his fifth. So Saberhagen can get in the win column, as we just found out. Florence at Edmonton. Edmonton beats Florence 4-3. Manchester at Hagerstown. Manchester drops a big one to Hagerstown, 14 to 6. Whitey Ford drops his third, loses his third game of the season. Canada at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay comes back and wins this one, 4 to 1. Chico's at Lehigh. Oh, Chico's wins. Seaver gets his 10th win of the season. More, uh, and Mordecai Brown loses his fifth. And if I sounded shocked, trust me, I was. I was expecting to lose that game. Berlin at Dallas. Berlin 5 shuts Dallas out. 5 nothing. Tville is Carlos still in the is Carlos still here? We might do two games if Carlos is still here. It does look like he's here. All right, let me get something to drink. We'll play a little quick commercial. I get something to drink and get my throat a rest and we'll be back to call try and get two more games in tonight. If your car's life is over, go see Ben Dover. You'll realize what you had was heinous when you hop in and ride your anus. Oh, yeah. You've enjoyed driving Mercury. You loved your Saturn. Now come and dig your anus. Love that new car smell? Nothing smells like your anus. Dependability? No one has ever got stuck in your anus. Take the plunge now. Be courageous. Bend over and ride your anus. And if you like a car that holds the road, you couldn't wipe out your anus if you tried. Uranus. Powerful, yet great with gas. Need trunk space? Rest assured you can pack anything in Uranus. And if Uranus is rear-ended, our well-lubricated joints will soften the blow. Come to our showroom and pick out Uranus and leave that messy paperwork to us. Check out Uranus. Take the dive like Greg Luganus. Bend over and ride Uranus. All right, and we're back. And since uh, Carlos was the first one in the park tonight, we're going to watch the T-Ville at Cleveland game, and then we'll follow that up with the Mid-Michigan at Amazing game. And then I'm going to stop it right there, save the file, and I don't know if Mike was planning on doing anything tonight or not. Um, but if not, we'll, we'll continue it on tomorrow and watch some more games. we got plenty of time to get through the month of July. All right, so off we go. T Villa Cleveland.
Okay, we're at Forbes Field tonight for the game between T-Ville and Cleveland. T-Ville has won one of their last 10. Pat Hen Henkin will start for T-Ville. He's made 16 starts, 6-5 six and five with an ERA of 455. It's going to be his second start against Cleveland. Frank Smith will be on the mound for Cleveland. He's made 15 starts. He's 6-7 and seven with an ERA of 392. This is his third start against T-Ville. He's 0-1 against T-Ville with a 582 ERA. It's 75 degrees with a wind speed of 8 miles per hour in from left field, and there's a light rain. So we'll see if we can get through this entire game without a rain Ball. delay. The lineup for the T-Ville Blue Bolts. Uh, we have Jose Cruz leading it off. Roberto Alomar batting second. Maglio Ordonez is batting third. Designated hitter Richie Ashburn will bat cleanup. John Olerud will bat fifth. Ernie Banks batting sixth. Lou Brock batting seventh. Ron Santo in the eighth spot. And rounding out the batting order, Jason Kendall. On defense uh, for the Indians, we have Carl Yastrzemski in left field. Fred Lynn in center field. Dwight Evans in right field. Andres Galarraga at first base. Bill Mazeroski batting, uh, sorry, playing second base. Hanley Ramirez at shortstop. Charlie Hayes at third. Behind the plate, Carlton Fisk. And on the mound, Frank Smith. 392 ERA, uh, six wins, seven losses. He's got, he's allowed 118 hits this year. 55 earned runs, six home runs. Struck out 105 and walked 64. He's going to face off against... Jose Cruz, who comes in with a 179 batting average and no home runs. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Cruz. Big fly ball into center field. Lynn has to retreat towards the track. He gets to the track and makes the grab for the first out. Roberto, Roberto Alomar batting 235. Two home runs. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and he'll take the walk from Smith. That's the first walk of the game here for Smith. One out now for Maglio Ordonez, who's batting 316, 10 home runs, and 26 RBIs. Alomar's off and running. Fisk will throw to second. Mazeroski gets it and lays the tag down to tag Alomar out, caught stealing second. So now with two outs. Maglio Ordonez uh, still at the plate. Here's the 0-1 pitch to strike Ordonez. Three. And he'll go down on strikes. That all in that inning. No runs, no hits. No errors committed. We go to the bottom of one. For the Indians, we've got Charlie Hayes leading it off. Carl, Carl Taylor batting second. Hal, Hanley Ramirez batting third. Fred Lynn. Batting fourth, Carl Yastrzemski will be in the fifth spot. Andres Galarraga will be in the sixth spot. Batting seventh will be Dwight Evans, Carlton Fisk in the eighth spot. And rounding out the batting order, Bill Mazeroski in the ninth spot. Jose Cruz will be at left field for, for uh, T-Ville. Lou Brock in center field. And Maglio Ordonez in right field. At first, we've got John Olerud. Roberto Alomar at second. Ernie Banks at shortstop. Ron Santo is at third base. Behind the plate catching is Jason Kendall. And he'll be receiving the pitches from Pat Henschen, who's got 16 starts, 112 and two-third innings pitched. He's allowed 114 hits, 57 earned runs, 16 home runs, 37 walks, and 73 strikeouts. He's got six wins, five losses, and a 455 ERA. Charlie Hayes will lead it off for Cleveland, batting 210 and five home runs. The pitch to Hayes, a grounder to Santo a third, and he will not make the throw. Unable to get to the ball in time. It's an infield single for the Cleveland Indians to lead it off. Carl Taylor now comes up for the Indians, batting 337, six home runs and 12 RBIs. Here's the pitch to Taylor, and Kendall fires to one to try and pick off Hayes. Not in time. 
Please gets back. It's a wild pitch to Taylor. Big fly ball in the right field. Ordonez all the way to the foul line to get to that one. Makes the catch in time for the first out. Hayes going nowhere. Stays on first. Hanley Ramirez, the shortstop for the Cleveland Indians. For the 257 average, seven home runs, and 31 RBIs. Henshin now fires over to one. Hayes back in plenty of time. As Hanley Ramirez waits for his first pitch. Hayes off and running to second. The throw from Kendall. And Hayes is caught stealing for the second out. And that'll bring up, uh, I'm sorry, Hanley Ramirez still at the plate with the 0-1 pitch. Now with two outs. Here's the pitch to Ramirez. And he'll go down on strikes. No runs, one hit, no errors. We go to the top of two. It's been an interesting game so far. And we're only in through one inning. Ashburn, Olerud, and Banks all do up for Teville. Ashburn with a 133 average. No home runs, no RBIs, only 15 at bats. So I have to assume he's in. Oh, he's the designated hitter. I have to assume he's in for an injured player. He'll take the pitch, and he just got himself a big hit into center field. A leadoff single now for Teville. As John Olerud comes up, batting 236, four home runs, and 22 RBIs. Ashburn at first. The big lead. Smith delivers. Ashburn is off and running. Fist to second, but not in time. We have our, have our first stolen base of the night. Also the first stolen base for Richie Ashburn this year. So now t has a runner on second. As uh, John Olerud has an 0-1 pitch coming his way. And he'll go down on strikes for the first out. Ernie Banks with a 235 average. Now steps up, 19 home runs, 53 RBIs. Smith fires to Banks, and this is going to get to Hayes on the ground. He'll fire across to Galarraga for the second out. Runner stays at second as Lou Brock now do up for the T-Ville. Bolts, Blue Bolts, uh, 219 average, excuse me, seven home runs, 21 RBIs. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Brock. And this is going to get into right field for a single. Ashburn around three. And he's on his way home. He comes home as an RBI single for Brock. For Teville, who now leads it 1-0. Ron Santo batting 131 average. Two home runs, 20 RBIs. Brock at first. Smith fires over to one. Brock back in plenty of time. That's uh, so... Santos still waiting for his first pitch from Smith. He gets it. He's going to get walked. Runners at first and second now with two outs. Ken, that Jason Kendall comes up. The ninth batter in the lineup for Teville, batting 275 and seven RBIs. Kendall with the pitch. And this is going to get into center field. It's a base hit. Brock around third. He's coming home. That's the second run now for T-Ville. Runners at first and second. We go back to the top of the lineup. Jose Cruz. Here's the pitch to Cruz. He gets walked. And, guys, I'm going to have to hold it. I apologize. We're going to have to hold it there. I'm dog sitting. And this dog is barking to go out. I want to make sure he doesn't shit on my floor. So I'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. My apologies. I hope everybody's still here. Let's get back into the game where we left off. Runners, uh, bases loaded. Roberto Alomar up to bat with a 235 average, two home runs, and 29 RBIs. Two outs. Alomar takes the pitch. And this is going to get to Mazeroski at second. He'll pick it up. Fire to first. Galarraga makes the glo uh, gloves the ball for the third out. We go to the bottom of two. But Teville scores two runs off of three hits. For the Indians, we're going to see Lynn, Yastrzemski, and Galarraga all do up at the plate. Fred Lynn takes the pitch. He goes down on strikes as Carl Yastrzemski, batting 197 this year, steps into the plate. He's got seven home runs so far. And the pitch is Stremski. This is a grounder to Banks at short. But Yastrzemski, with his speed, gets there easily. Actually, they're going to say Ernie Banks uh, made an error trying to field that ball. So Yastrzemski reaches on an error, not an infield single. Andres Galarraga comes into the plate, batting 253 this year. He's got 16 home runs and 46 RBIs. Yastrzemski with a big lead off of first. He takes off running. Kendall, it's a bunt, it looked like, towards third base. And Galarraga's going to reach on that bunt. Call it a single. Uh, so we got runners on first and second out for the Cleveland Indians. With only one out as Dwight Evans batting 167 this year. One RBI, no home runs. Here's the full count to Three. Evans. He goes down on strikes. That's the second out. As Carlton Fisk now comes up for the Indians. 227 average, seven home runs, 28 RBIs. Runners on first and second. Yastrzemski with a big lead off a of second. Here comes the pitch to Fisk. And this is going to get to the wall down the right field line. This is going to score at least one if not two. Ordonez gives chase. Yastrzemski coming home. Galarraga on his way to third. Rounding third. He's heading home. He gets in safely. Fisk makes it to second with no trouble. His 14th double of the year knocks in two RBIs. We're back to an all tied up game, 2-2. Bill Mazeroski now up for the Cleveland Indians. He's batting 183 this year with six home runs and 21 RBIs. Here's the 0-1 pitch. This is going to get past Kendall. Fisk gets to third off the wild pitch. So the 1-1 count to Mazeroski. And this is going to get a right center field for a single. That'll knock in Fisk. We just got to third off the wild pitch. So now the Cleveland Indians lead Teville by one, three to two. Still two outs. As Charlie Hayes at the top of the lineup for Cleveland Indians steps up to the plate. Here's the pitch to Hayes. He goes down on strikes. The inning, inning is finally over. But three runs come across off of three hits. One error committed by Teville. We go to the top of three. Teville trailing by one. Maglio Ardonez will lead it off for Teville. He takes the 2-0 pitch. And that's a grounder to second base. Mazeroski. Makes a fantastic glove off of that one. Fires to one in time for the first out. Richie Ashburn, one for one so far tonight. Here's the pitch from Smith. And this is going to get into left center field for a base hit. A single for Ashburn. That's his second hit of the night. John Olerud, he was 0 for 1. Ashburn is off and running. It was a hit and run. But this one's going to go foul into the stands in the right field. So now, Olerud with a 1-2 pitch. 1-2 count. Here's the pitch. And he'll get walked. So he turns a 1-2 count into a walk. Now runners on first and second for Ernie Banks, who's 0 for 1. The pitch to Banks. Big, deep fly ball in left field. This one's high. This one's deep. This one is gone. A three RBI shot for Ernie Banks. 
gives the T-Ville the lead now, 5-3 to three over the Indians, 365-footer, his 20th home run of the year. That brings up Lou Brock, who was still only one out for T against T-Ville. Brock takes the pitch. This is a grounder to Mazeroski. He picks it up, fires to one. That'll be the second out as Ron Santo comes up, who got walked his first and only plate appearance so far in the game. This is going to get in the center field for a single. So Teville on a hit hitting streak here. Everybody's joining this hit parade as Jason Kendall, who's already one for one in this game. Santo with a huge lead at first. And he's off and running. Fisk will throw to Mazeroski at second. Not in time. That's the second stolen base of the season for Ron Santo. Jason Kendall. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Dead ball! And he'll get hit by pitch. So Smith walks Kendall by hitting him. Runners on first and second for T-Ville as Jose Cruz comes up. Uh, Frank Smith has walked uh, four so far in this game. Excuse me. Walked four so far in this game. He struck out two. Runners on first and second. Two outs. Jose Cruz. He takes a full count, and he gets walked. So now Smith walks the bases loaded as Roberto Alomar steps up to the plate. He's 0 for 1. And the pitch to Alomar. And he walks Alomar and walks in a run. And I don't see the manager going anywhere so far. We'll see what happens here. Now base is still loaded for Ordonez. Two outs, a walked-in run. Teville now up by three. Pitch to Ordez. He's going to go down on strikes. That'll end the inning. Four runs, three hits, no errors. As the Indians walk at least one or the, uh, walked one of those runs in. We go to the bottom of three. Teville leading by three. Taylor, Ramirez, and Lynn all do up for the Indians. The pitch to Taylor. And a hard ground at a first. Olerud picks this one up. It's a three unassisted as he runs it back to the bag. Handler Ramirez, who's 0 for 1. And this is a grounder to Santo third. He fires across the diamond to Olerud. That's the second out. As Fred Lynn steps up to the plate with two outs. 0 for 1. Take the pitch, he goes down on strikes. That's a quick 1-2-3 inning for the Cleveland Indians. We go to the top of four. Batters four, five, and six. All due up for T-Ville. Ashburn to lead it off. He's got two hits in two at-bats. Here's a pitch to Ashburn. This is going to be into right field. Evans comes up to grab that one for the first out. John Olerud, he's 0 for 1 tonight. Ball, ball. He's going to get walked. Base. So Smith issues his seventh walk already. Of the game as Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks hit that huge three-run homer. His last at bat. Now up. And this is going to be a big fly ball in left field. But Yastrzemski will run up and grab that one. And Olerud will stay at first. Lou Brock, who's one for two tonight. He'll take the pitch. And this is going to get into foul territory. First down foul first ball. in first base line. And, but it's going to get into the stands as a souvenir. He'll get another chance with the 1-2 pitch from Smith. And it's a wild pitch past fist. So Olerud, Olerud will get to second base off the wild pitch. So with two outs, Brock, who's one for two, takes the pitch. A grounder back to the mound. Smith picks it up, fires to one for the third out. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the bottom of four. Yastrzemski to lead it off. For the Indians. Here's the one-two pitch to Stremski. It's a grounder to Alomar second. He fires to Aulerud for the first out. Andres Galarraga, who's one for one. He'll take the one-two pitch. And he goes down on strikes for the second out. That'll bring up Dwight Evans, who's 0 for 1 in this game. The pitch to Evans. Big, deep fly ball in the right field. Ordonez covers a lot of ground to get to that one into right center for the third out. They go down. One, two, three. We go to the top of five. T-Ville will see Santo, Kendall, and then Cruz 
all due up at bat. The pitch to Santo into center field. That's his second hit of the night. It's a single. Ramirez, they're going to say, made a bad playoff of that one. It was an error. He just made a bad beat on the ball for the single for Santo. Runner on first, Kendall, who's one for one tonight. He was hit by pitch his last at bat. The pitch from Smith to Kendall. And this is going to be a liner to Hayes at third for the first out. That'll bring up Jose Cruz. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Cruz. Another wild pitch by Smith allows Santo to beat it out to second base. Cruz with the 1-1 pitch. Runner on second and one out. He going to get walked. That is the eighth walk of the game for Smith. And we're only in the top of the fifth inning. Alomar with the 1-2 pitch. This is going to be a grounder. Ramirez at short. He gets it to Mazeroski at second. He fires over to Galarraga at first. That will be a double play to end the inning. One hit, but no runs and no errors. We'll see Fisk, Mazeroski, and then back to the top of the lineup, Hayes for Cleveland Indians. Fisk, who's one for one, takes the pitch. It's a grounder to Banks. Banks to Olerud. That's the first out. To Mazeroski, who's one for one. Wow, what a shot down left field line all the way to the ball. Mazeroski will round first. Cruz gives chase to the ball. Mazeroski is going to take off to third. <laughs> the throw from Cruz, not in time. It's a triple for Bill Mazeroski, his second triple of the season. Santo made a poor play on that ball at third to let that ball get all the way to left field and make it in, into a triple. So now Cleveland has a man on third, trailing by three as Charlie Hayes comes up. He's one for two tonight. And this is going to get into center field. That'll knock in an RBI. It's an RBI single for Hayes. The lead now cut down to two. One out still for the Cleveland Indians as Taylor comes up. He's 0 for 2. Hayes at first, not taking a big lead. Hendren will fire over to first, but Hayes back in plenty of time. He's safe. He's now holding a little closer at first base. The pitch to Taylor. This is going to get into right field and drop in front of Ordonez for a, sec uh, for a single. The runners at first and second with one out. We see Haley Ramirez come back up to the plate. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He has 31 RBIs this season. Strike three. But he's yeah. going to go down on strikes. And that'll be the second out for the Cleveland Indians as Fred Lynn comes back up to bat. 0 for 2. Runners on first and second. The pitch oh, to 3-0 pitch. Lynn gets walked. That is the first walk issued by Pat Hentgen this game he's also got uh struck out seven so far so he's looking pretty good on the mound here's the pitch to yastrzemski and this is going to be a single up in the center field hayes comes home taylor rounds third he comes home the game is all tied up again six six still two outs for the indian runners on first and second andres galarraga the sixth bat in the lineup for cleveland indians the 2-1 pitch, a grounder to Alomar at second. He fires to one. That's the third out. Three runs come across off of four hits. No errors were committed. We go to the top of six. The game is all knotted at six. Ordonez, Ashburn, and Olerud all do up for T-Ville. And it's a grounder to Hayes at third. He'll fire over to Galarraga for the first out. Hey, Dwayne, welcome. Ashburn with one out. He's two for three. He's already got two hits tonight so far. He'll take the pitch. And Smith off the mound to get this one. Fires over to one in time to get the second out. Olerud is uh, 0 for 1. He's been walked twice and struck out once. The pitch, a hard shot to right field down the line. Evans chasing after it into the corner. Olerud will top round first, head to second. The throw from Evans to Ramirez. 
not in time. It's the 15th double of the season for John Olerud. Poor play there by Galarraga to try and get to that ball, allowed that big hit. So Teville with a man on second now and two outs as Ernie Banks comes up. Ernie Banks has three RBIs already with his big shot that he hit. Fisk to talk to Smith. The pitch to Banks. And it's just a high pop-up into uh, to third base. Hayes under this one doesn't even have to move for the third out. We go to the bottom of six. Both teams have eight hits. Both teams have six runs. Teville with an error. Indians, no errors. Teville have left nine stranded. Indians have only left three on base. Evans, Fisk, and Mazeroski, batter 7-8-9, all do up for Cleveland. The pitch to Evans, and this is going to get into the stands in left field. Foul, uh, foul territory. So 2-2 two -two pitch to Evans. He goes down on strikes for the first out. Carlton Fisk, one for two. One out. Three. He goes down on strikes. So Hendren with two big strikeouts in a row now faces off against Bill Mazeroski, who's two for two so far this evening. And this is going to be a grounder to Santo a third. Fires over to Olerud in plenty of time for the third out. Down goes Cleveland Indians, one, two, three. We go to the top of seven where Lou Brock will lead it off for T-Ville. Batters seven, eight, and nine. All due up. The pitch strike to Brock. Three. He goes down on strikes. That is the fourth strikeout by Smith. As he now faces off against Santo, who's two for two. The pitch to Santo. This is going to be big, deep ball into left field. But Yastrzemski back to the wall will make the grab for the second out. Boy, did he cover a lot of ground. That was a deep fly ball into left field. That'll see uh, Jason Kendall come up. He's one for two. The ninth batter in the lineup for Teville. It's a grounder to Hayes at third to first in plenty of time. Galarago ground. Uh, love that one. We go to the seventh inning stretch. Okay, there were no runs and no hits in the top of seven. We're at the bottom of seven now. The leadoff batter for Cleveland Indians, Hayes, will lead it off, followed by Taylor Ramirez. Hayes is two for three. The pitch, it's a grounder to Banks at short. He fires to one. That's the first out. Carl Taylor, who's one for three, ball, takes ball. the pitch. He's going to get the free pass. That's only the second walk issued to the Cleveland Indians as Hanley Ramirez, who's 0 for 3, comes up. Here's the pitch from Henshin. This is going to be a grounder to Banks. He's going to fight to Alomar. 6, 4, 3, double play. That ends the inning. We go to the top of 8. Frank Smith looking a little worn on the mound. We'll face off against the leadoff batter for Teville, Jose Cruz. Who then he gets followed by Alomar and Ardonez. Smith to Cruz. It's the full count. It's a liner to Mazeroski at second for the first out. Roberto Alomar, who's hitless so far in the game, takes the pitch from Smith. A grounder to Hayes. He'll fire over to one in plenty of time for the second out. And that brings up Maglio Ardonez. 161 pitches so far for Smith. He's given up eight hits, one home run, eight walks, four strikeouts. And that's it. Roy Face is coming into pitch for Cleveland. Roy Face, 14 and a third, given up 15 hits, six earned runs, only one home run. He's struck out 12 and walked five. He's got three wins, two losses, and three saves and a 377 ERA. The 1-2 pitch to Ardonez. 
Big high pop-up to shortstop. Ramirez takes a couple steps to his right. Gets under that one for the third out. We go to the bottom of eight. The game still knotted at six. Lynn, Yastrzemski, and Galarraga all do up for Cleveland. The pitch to Lynn. He's going to get walked. So a leadoff walk for Cleveland. That brings up Carl Yastrzemski, who's one for three. Kendall will go out and talk to Henshin, try and calm him down. Here's the pitch to Stremski. It's a grounder to Olerud at first. He's going to fire over to Banks. Banks does not fire back in time. Stremski reaches on a fielder's choice. The leadoff runner, though, is out for the first out. Galarraga won for three. Stremski with a big lead at first. Here's the pitch to Galarraga. He's going to go down on strikes off that fastball. Big swing and a miss there for Galarraga. That'll be the second out. Dwight Evans. He's got one RBI so far this year. Only 33 at-bats. Five hits and a 152 average. Runner on first. Yastrzemski's taking a huge lead. And there he goes. Kendall will fire to Alomar at second. Nowhere near in time. That's stolen base number five for Carl Yastrzemski. Evans with the 0-1 pitch. He's going to get walked. Takes the 0-1 count all the way to a walk. Brings up Carlton Fisk. Eighth in the lineup for the Cleveland Indians. Runners on first and second. All tied up at six. The 2-2 pitch. Deep fly ball into center field. Brock to his right. Gets to that one for the third out. The Indians will leave two stranded. No hits, no runs. We go to the top of nine. Ashburn to lead it off for T-Ville. Here's the pitch to, to Ashburn. He goes down on strikes for the first out of the inning. And that brings up John Olerud, who's one for two. He's been walked twice, struck out once, and doubled his last at bat. Pitch to John Olerud. He's going to go down on strikes. That's the second strikeout of this inning for T-Ville. Roy Face now with two strikeouts. Here's... The pitch to Ernie Banks, who's one for four. Strike three. He goes down on strikes, but Fist drops the third strike. He has to pick it back up, and he fires to Galarraga at one to get the out. So they go down. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of nine. Henshin remi- remains on the mound. He's got 135 pitches so far. He's passed his expected pitch count. He's going to face off against Mazeroski, who's two for three, and he strikes him out. That's the 11th strikeout of the game on a pitcher who looks worn out, but he's going to stay in. Walked four, 11 strikeouts. And that's it. They're going to the bullpen. They said enough. Let's not wear them out too much. Mike Timlin will come in. 31 innings pitched, 32 hits, 13 earned runs, six home runs, 24 strikeouts, 13 walks, three wins, three losses, one save, and a 377 ERA with one out faces off against Charlie Hayes who's two for four and this is going to get into center field for a base hit that's hit number three today for Charlie Hayes so a runner on first with one out for the Cleveland Indians they only need to score one and the game is over we're at the bottom of nine and Cleveland is the home team Ellis Burks is going to come in and pinch hit for Carl Taylor. Hayes is off and running. Kendall fires to second. And Hayes is caught stealing. Alomar gets the ball, lays down the tag. Great throw from Kendall. That's the second out. And boy, is that going to hurt the Indians who only needed to get that run across to win the game. Timlin now fires to Burks, who has got his uh, first plate appearance in this game. It was a foul ball into left field territory. Uh, designated Ellis Burks. It comes in with a 247 average. Seven home runs and 16 RBIs. The pitch to Burks. And this is going to get into left field for a base hit. So his he comes in and gets a hit right off the bat, so to speak. With two outs, Burks at first. Hanley Ramirez now up. 
Burks with a big lead off of, off of first, trying to steal. And there goes Burks. Kendall will fire to Alomar second again. <laughs> this time, not it's not in time. Burks with his second stolen base of the year. So that winning run is now at second with two outs. As Haley Ramirez takes the 1-0 pitch. And this is in the left field. Burks is going to round. Cruz is going to throw it home. Not in time. <laughs> That's going to be the game. The Indians win it 7-6. to six. Two outs, and they score that run in to take the game. So, Teville gets eight hits, six runs, and commits one error. Cleveland with 11 hits, seven runs, no errors. Some of the highlights for batting. Ashburn goes two for five. Banks with a home run. That's, all, that's for Teville. Over here for Cleveland, Hayes goes three for five. No home runs for Cleveland. The MVP tonight goes to Bill Mazeroski, who was uh, two for four and uh, one triple. So a great game. But, uh, yeah, that was a very good game. So we're going to go one more. I promised Slashed would see mid-Michigan tonight, and that's going to be my last game. If I can only do four, my throat's getting a little sore. So let's go off to mid-Michigan and amazing. All right. Well, for some reason, it's bringing in Justin Verlander. I don't know how... Slashed has his manager file, but is bringing in Justin Verlander off a short rest to pitch in this game. So mid-Michigan, uh, Slashed, I, I suggest you look at your manager file before the next month is up. These could cost you some games if that, I don't know why that's happening. I don't know if you got daily starters on or what. Yeah, it looks like you do. I think you must have had him planned on coming in um, too soon. Or he had to pitch in a big game, something. Uh, maybe that went extra innings. I don't know. But, um, yeah, things like that. got to be careful on that. Well, we're at Veteran Stadium for the game between Mid-Michigan and the Amazing Katsoons. Justin Verlander, it will start for Mid-Michigan. He's obviously already starting worn out. He's got 18 starts on the year. He's 8-4 with an ERA of 357. It's his second start against Amazing. He's 1-0 against them with a zero ERA. I'd say that's a pretty good little pitching uh, outing there. Danny Jackson is on the mound for Amazing. He's got 17 starts so far this year. He's 4-8 with an ERA of 405. <laughs> This is his second start against Mid-Michigan. He's 0-1 with a 470 ERA. It's 88 degrees. The wind speed is 5 miles per hour out to left center field. Play ball! For Mid-Michigan, Curtis Granderson will lead it off. Barry Bonds batting second. Matt Williams batting third. Jim Tomei, the designated hitter, batting cleanup. Miguel Cabrera in fifth spot. Tony Canigliaro. Batting six, Lou Whitaker batting seventh. In the eighth spot was, will be Alan Trammell. And Ivan Rodriguez will round out the lineup. On defense for the Amazing Kitsunes, we got Greg Luzinski in left field. Gary Maddox in center field. Bake McBride in right field. At first is Ryan Howard. Chase Utley at second. Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. Mike Schmidt. Schmidt Happens will be at third. Darren Dalton will be behind the plate catching. Four, Danny Jackson, who comes in with 117 and two-third inning pitched. 134 hits, 53 earned runs, eight home runs. He struck out 62 so far, walked 40 this year. He's got four wins, eight losses, and a 405 ERA. Curtis Granison will lead it off for mid-Michigan. He's got a 244 average. And 15 home runs. 
It's a grounder. To, um, Jackson off the mound picks that one up. Fires over to Howard at first for the first out. Barry Bonds. Barry. Barry. Batting 205 this year. He has 17 home runs. The 2-1 pitch to Bonds. Into right field. It's a liner to McBride. He makes the grab for the second out. And that brings up Matt Williams batting 181 this year with 30, uh, 17 home runs and 34 RBIs. Strike the 0-2 pitch, he goes down on strike. So mid-Michigan goes down quickly. 1-2-3. We go to the bottom of one. For the amazing Kitsunes, we'll see Jimmy Rollins, Gary Maddox batting second, Bake McBride batting third, Greg Lazinski batting fourth. In the fifth spot, Darren Dalton. Batting six, Ryan Howard. He's going to be followed by Chase Utley, who will then be followed by Mike Schmidt. And rounding out the lineup in the ninth spot is Ricky Jordan, the designated hitter. Barry Bonds will be in left field for the Thrillers. Curtis Granderson will be in center field. And Tony Canigliaro in right field. Miguel Cabrera will be at first. Lou Whitaker at second. Allen, I'm going to say it once, the treadmill trammel at shortstop. Matt Williams at third. Ivan Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate catching for Jason, Justin, excuse me, Justin Verlander. 18 starts, 108 and a third innings pitched. 76 hits, 43, 43 earned runs, 14 home runs. He struck out 104, walked 45. He's got eight wins, four losses, and a 357. ERA, and as we know, he comes in a little worn out. So we'll see how long he goes in this game as he faces off against Jimmy Rollins, the leadoff batter for the amazing Kitsunes, who's got a 231 average and eight home runs. Here's the pitch, and it's a base hit to lead off for the amazing Kitsunes into right field. Tony Camigliaro will come up and field it. So Rollins at first as Gary Maddox comes in with a 239 average. Four home runs and 16 RBIs. Jimmy Rollins with a huge lead off of first. Verlander fires over to one. Rollins is picked off. So Verlander to Cabrera. Cabrera gets the eye down. Uh, gets the tag down. Excuse me. Gets the tag down uh, for the first out. So Gary Maddox hasn't got hasn't even gotten his first pitch yet. The runner was picked off at first. Dead ball. And Verlander will plunk Maddox. And send him to first. And that'll bring up Bake McBride. Bake McBride batting 243. Six home runs and 35 RBIs this year. Maddox not taking a very big lead. Perhaps he doesn't want to get thrown out. Well, a wild pitch will get past Ivan Rodriguez. He's unable to corral that. Not a wild pitcher. A pass ball. So Ivan Rodriguez with a pass ball allows the runner to get to two. One out. It's the 2-1 pitch to McBride. It's a grounder into right field for a single. Maddox will round third. No, he's going to hold. Nicolaro gets that back in quickly to cut off. Maddox felt he didn't have a chance to get home. So runners on first and third for Greg Luzinski. He faces one out. He's got a 253 average, five home runs, 31 RBI so far this year. McBride off and running. Rodriguez throws to second. Not in time. 29th stolen base this season for Bake McBride. So now runners at second and third with one out. That takes care of the double play ball. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Lazinski. Big fly ball left field. Bonds comes up and he makes the grab. Maddox backs and tags. But he'll hold. Bonds throws to Williams at third. Maddox going nowhere. So those runners stay at second and third for Darren Dalton. Batting 154 this year. Six home runs and 20 RBIs. He's got two outs against him as he's trying to get those runners in. And he's going to go down on strikes. That ends the inning. So Verlander able to get out of that inning. Two hits, but no runs come across. We go to the top of two. We're going to see Tomei, Cabrera, and Canigliaro all do up for the thrillers. Jim Tomei, the designated hitter, batting 246 and 15 home runs so far this year. He takes the pitch, and he goes down on strikes for the first out in the inning. Danny Jackson now faces off against Miguel Cabrera, batting 256, nine home runs. The pitch to Cabrera. 
Oh, a hard shot in left field. This is going to get past Wazinski to the wall. Cabrera rounds one. Strolls into second base for his 12th double of the year. So with a runner on second now, Tony Clinigliaro steps into the plate. Steps into the box. Batting 208 with six home runs and 38 RBIs. One out. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He'll go down on strikes for the second out. And now Lou Whitaker will come up. Trying to knock in that go-ahead run off a second. He's batting 179 this year. Only 13 RBIs and no home runs. Here's the pitch to Whitaker. It's a pop-up behind the plate. Dalton gives chase. Not in time. That's going to get into the stands. Uh, Whitaker will get another chance at this. Here's the one-two pitch. It's a grounder to Schmidt. <laughs> Schmidt holds the ball. Doesn't make the throw. Nor does he tag the runner coming to third. So I don't know what the heck Schmidt was thinking about there, but didn't make an out on either one of the runners. Whitaker at first, Cabrera at third, and Alan Tremel now up at bat with a 219 average, six home runs and 28 RBIs. Facing two outs. Here's the pitch to Trammell. It's a grounder to Schmidt. This time Schmidt does fire to one in plenty of time to get Trammell out for the third out. We go to the bottom of two. We're going to see Howard, Utley, and Schmidt all do up for the amazing Kitsunes. Ryan Howard batting 212 and 12 home runs. Takes the pitch from Verlander. A liner to Cabrera. He gloves that for the first out. Chase Utley with his first at bat, batting a 206 average this year and 11 home runs. Verlander winds and delivers. It's a grounder to Trammell at short. He's going to fire to Cabrera at one. It's a close play. But he makes it in time, so that's going to be the second out. As Mike Schmidt strolls up to the plate, batting eighth of the lineup, 185 average, 13 home runs. Verlander delivers the 2-0 pitch. This is going to be a fly ball in left field. Bonds to the corner, makes the grab for the third out. They go down 1-2-3. We go to the top of three. Rodriguez will lead it off for mid-Michigan. Then they go back to the top of the lineup. Rodriguez comes in, batting 210, four home runs. The pitch to Pudge. It's going to be a single into center field, a leadoff single for Ivan Rodriguez. Curtis Granderson, he's 0 for 1, the leadoff batter for mid-Michigan. Rodriguez at first, not taking a very big lead. Granderson pops this one up behind the plate. Dalton gives chase. He's going to get to this one. That's the first out off the pop-up. Bonds, Barry Bonds, comes up. He's 0 for 1. He's got 38 RBIs this year. Rodriguez, not a threat to steal. Bonds with a grounder to Howard. Howard fires to Rollins at short. Rollins fires back to Howard at first. Double play to end the inning. One hit, no runs. We go to the bottom of three. Batters 9, 1, and 2 for the amazing Kitsunes all do up. Ricky Jordan will lead it off. He's batting 500, but he's only got four at-bats this year so far. He's two for four and one home run. Here's the pitch to Jordan. And this is going to be deep into center field. Granderson has to give chase towards the track. Makes the grab at the track for the first out. Jimmy Rollins, the top of the lineup for the Amazing Kitsunes. One for one so far in the game. And it's a grounder to Whitaker at second. Two Cabrera at first for the second out. Gary Maddox. Gary Maddox was hit by pitch. His last at bat. And it's a grounder to Williams who fires across to Cabrera in plenty of time for the third out. Once again, no runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the top of four. Williams, Tome, Cabrera all do up for the thrillers. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Williams. It's a grounder to Schmidt. Schmidt fires to Howard at first, and that'll be the first out. Jim Tomei, who's 0 for 1. Big fly ball into right field. McBride has to come up. He'll field that one. Danny Jackson injured on the pitch. He's out of the game. And they're going to bring in Tug McGraw. Tug McGraw, who's played in 17 games this season, 28 innings pitched. 
He's allowed 20 hits, only seven earned runs, three home runs. Struck out eight, walked four. He's got a 225 ERA. He's got two wins, one loss, and six saves. Comes in early in this game. Let's see how long he can go. As he faces off against Cabrera, he's one for one. Cabrera with a big shot in left field. This one is high. This one's deep. And this one is go off the wall. No, it is not a home run. It's off the wall. A stand-up double for McGre uh, Cabrera. His second today is 13th of the season. So now the Thrillers have a runner on second. No, uh, two outs, excuse me, two outs as Tony Canigliaro comes up. Canigliaro with a big shot in left field, but Luzinski is going to come up and field that one cleanly for the third out. One hit, no runs. We go to the bottom of four. Still scoreless in this game. McBride will lead it off for the amazing Kitsunes. He's one for one. Ball, ball. Bake gets walked. So a leadoff walk by Justin Verlander to start the bottom half of the fourth for the amazing Kitsunes. Greg Luzinski is 0 for 1. McBride's off and running. Rodriguez is not even going to make the throw. Bake McBride strolls in a second. His second stolen base of the day, his 30th of the year. Luzinski with the 0 1 pitch. He's going to get walked. So now maybe the uh, fatigue on Verlander for coming in on a short rest is starting to show as he walks two in a row. No outs. Will now deal to Darren Dalton, who's 0 for 1. The 0 2 pitch to Dalton. It's a grounder to Whitaker at second. He's going to get it to Trammell at short. Trammell is unable to turn the play, double play in time. Dalton will reach off the fielder's choice. Runners at first and third. One out for Ryan Howard, who's got 33 RBIs so far this year, but he's 0 1 so far in this game. Verlander fires to one. Dalton back in plenty of time. Here's the pitch to Verla. I mean to Howard. It's a grounder to Cabrera. Cabrera fires to Trammell at, at second. Not back in time. He's not even going to make the throw. McBride will come home. That's going to be the first run. Once again, unable to turn the double play, allowing the run to score. Chase Utley with two outs. Ryan Howard at first base, taking a, a sizable lead, and he's off and running, but. It was a strikeout anyways. That'll end the inning. One run comes across. No hits. That one run came off of the walk issued. One of the walks issued by Verlander. Whitaker, Trammell, and Rodriguez all do up for mid-Michigan. Mid-Michigan trailing by one. Whitaker is one for one. Here's the pitch from McGraw. This is going to get in center field for a base hit. So Whitaker now with his second hit of the game as Allen Trammell comes up. Trammell's 0 for 1. The pitch to Trammell. It's a bunt, a sack bunt. Dalton will fire to uh, Utley was covering the base on the bunt for the out. Whitaker advances to second off the sack bunt. Ivan Rodriguez will uh, step into the plate, uh, step into the box rather. Excuse me. He singled. His last at bat. He's one for one. Tying run on second. It's a grounder to Rollins at short. He fires to Howard at first. Makes the out, but Whitaker then takes off to third and makes it no throw to try and tag him out. So now Whitaker is at third with two outs. Curtis Granderson, who's 0 for 2, takes the pitch. This is a pop-up to Utley at second. Utley takes a few steps back. Gets underneath the ball, makes the third out. One hit, but no runs. We go off to the bottom of five. Schmidt, Jordan, and Rollins all do up for the amazing Kitsunes. Verlander looking strong, even though he comes off Can't short rest. Read. Schmidt did not happen in that at that at bat as he goes down on strikes. Ricky Jordan. Who's batting 400? Again, he's got only five at bats so far this season. Two hits. He's 0 for 1 in this game. Big fly ball pop up, rather, to Trammell at short. Takes a couple steps back into his right to make the catch for the second out. 
Jimmy Rollins, who's one for two. The one-one pitch. Deep into right field. Canigliaro will get to that one. That's the third out. The amazing Kitsunes go down. One, two, three. We go to the top of six. The Mid-Michigan Thrillers trailing the amazing Kitsunes. One, nothing. Mid-Michigan has five hits. The Kitsunes only have two hits. Here's the pitch to Bonds. And it's a grounder to Howard. He'll pick it up and run it back to the bag himself for the first out. Matt Williams. Grounder to Schmidt. Schmidt made this happen as he fires over to Howard for the second out. Jim Tomei, the designated hitter, 0 for 2 for mid-Michigan Thrillers. Grounder to Howard again. Oh, Howard bobbles the ball, but he still picks it up in time to get to the bag for the third out. Down goes the Thrillers. 1, 2, 3. Still scoreless for mid-Michigan. Verlander remains on the mound to face off against Maddox, McBride, and Luzinski. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Maddox. Back, a comebacker to the mound. Verlander fires over to one in time for the first out. Bake McBride, who's got two steals. He's been walked once and uh, singled once. He's got two steals already tonight. Verlander to McBride. It's a grounder to Trammell. He fires to Cabrera in plenty of time for the second out. And that brings up Greg Luzinski, who's 0 for 1. Here is the 0-2 pitch to Luzinski. Oh, this is going to get into left field for a base hit. A single for Luzinski. Two outs. Darren Dalton, 0 for 2. Luzinski on first, takes taking a pretty decent lead. Rodriguez will go out and talk to Verlander. Verlander delivers and walks Dalton. So now want runners on first and second for the amazing Kitsunes as they face two outs. And Ryan Howard, who's 0 for 2 tonight, comes up. Verlander issued his third walk of the night. He's also struck out three. And that's it. They've seen enough. Mid-Michigan Thrillers are going to the bullpen. And they're bringing in Ray Culp, who's only played in four games, 12 and two-thirds innings pitched, 10 hits, only one earned run off of those, no home runs given up. He struck out six and walked seven. He's got two wins, no losses, no saves, and a 0.71 ERA coming into this game. He's going to face off against Ryan Howard, who's 0 for 2, and with runners on first and second, Howard with a fly ball into foul territory, down third baseline. That's going to get into the stands. So Howard with the 0-2 pitch. 0-2 count, rather. Waiting for the next pitch. And this is a fly ball in the center field. Granderson gives chase. Runs back. Makes the grab. That's the third out. One hit. No runs for the amazing Kitsunes. We go to the top of seven. Where Miguel Cabrera leads it off. Miguel Cabrera is batting two. He's two for two tonight. Already with two hits. And this is deep into center field. Maddox to his left makes the grab for the first out. Tony Canigliaro looking for his first hit of the game. Strike three. He'll go down on strikes instead. A big swing and a miss there for Tony Canigliaro. And Tug McGraw now to face off against Whitaker, who's also got two hits so far in this game. Tug McGraw looking a little worn air on the, on the mound, but he's going to stay in. And this is going to be a liner right back to McGraw, who will make the grab. We go to the seventh inning stretch. And we're back. The amazing Kitsunes at the bottom of seventh. We'll see Utley, Schmidt, and Jordan all do up. Utley's 0 for 2. And here's the 1-2 pitch to Utley. This is going to get into center field for a base hit. Utley's first, sing first hit of the night. 
Mike Schmidt strolls to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Utley with a gigantic lead at first base. Culp fires over to one, but Utley gets back in plenty of time. Still taking a sizable sizable lead, but big threat to steal there. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Schmidt. And over Trammell's head at shortstop into left field. Bonds will pick it up, throw it back to Trammell. Utley gets the second. It's a single for Schmidt. His first hit of the game. That'll bring up the ninth batter in the lineup for the Amazing Kitsunes. Ricky Jordan, who's 0 for 2. Runners on first and second. No outs. Culp delivers to Jordan. Fly ball into deep right field. This one is caught by Canigliaro at the wall. Utley takes off running. Canigliaro throws to Williams at third. Not in time. Utley is under the tag. He gets to third. Schmidt will hold it first. So one out now for the Amazing Kitsunes. Runners on first and third. As Jimmy Rollins, the leadoff batter, comes up. Batting one for three tonight. Here's the pitch to Rollins. This is going to be a pop-up towards second base. Whitaker gets under that one for the second out. Neither runner can go anywhere. Gary Maddox, 0 for 2. Runners on first and second. And two outs. The pitch from Culp to Maddox. A liner to Williams at third. That'll be the third out. We go to the top of eight, where mid-Michigan still trails by one. Tug McGraw is still on the mound so far to face off against Alan Trammell. And, nope, here comes the bullpen. The call being made to bring in Ryan Madsen, who's pitched 32, 38 and two-thirds innings. Allowed 30 hits, 13 earned runs, two home runs. Struck out 36 and only walked nine. He's got a 303 ERA. No wins, four losses, and one save. Stats there. But he's 0-4. All right. Madsen faces to, uh, throws to Trammell. Trammell grounder to Schmidt. Schmidt to Howard for the first out. In comes Ivan Rodriguez, the ninth batter of the lineup for the Thrillers. He is one for two. And this is going to get into center field for a base hit. So Rodriguez gets his second hit of the night. And that brings up the leadoff batter for mid-Michigan. Curtis Granderson, who is hitless, 0 for 3. Rodriguez holding close to the first. It's a grounder to Howard. Howard to Rollins at second. Rollins back to Howard. It's the double play to end the inning. One hit, no runs. We go to the bottom of eight. Mid-Michigan remains scoreless. Kitsunes with one run leading the game. Bake McBride, who's 1 for 2. We'll lead off for the Kitsunes. Here's the pitch. Big, deep fly ball into center field. Granderson back to the wall. Makes the grab for the first out. Greg Lazinski is one for two. Takes the pitch. Grounder to Williams at third. Fires across the diamond. That's the second out. Darren Dalton. 0 for 2 tonight. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and he'll go down on strikes. That'll end that inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. The Kitsunes go down. One, two, three. We're at the top of the ninth. Mid-Michigan needs to make something happen here. They're going to lead off this inning with Barry Bonds, who's 0 for 3 so far in this game. Madsen remains on the mound. Pitches to Bonds. Big fly ball into right field. But McBride is able to get to that at the warning track for the first out. Matt Williams is also 0 for 3 tonight. Just not much hitting from the top of the lineup for the mid-Michigan Thrillers. Takes the pitch, and he'll pop this one up behind home plate. Dalton gives chase, throws off the mask, gets under this one for the second out. The Thrillers down to their last out. Jim Tomei, who's also hitless, 0 for 3. And they're actually going to bring in Brad Lidge to pitch. And let's take a look at Brad. He's got 21 innings pitched, 13 hits, three home runs, nine earned runs. He struck out 23, walked 16. He's got five wins, two losses, five saves with a 386 ERA. Here's the pitch to Tomei. He goes down on strikes. That'll end the game. Mid-Michigan zero. The amazing Kitsunes. 
one. So you can't, I don't think you can blame Verlander coming in uh, off a short rest on that. It wasn't a high scoring game. He didn't give up a lot of hits and runs. You can blame that on the lineup for mid-Michigan. The first four batters all hitless. Mid-Michigan with six hits and no runs. Amazing. Kitsunes, five hits, one run. Neither team scored, uh, neither team committed an error. Uh, again, the problem with mid-Michigan, absolutely hitless through the first four batters. Cabrera went two for three. Whitaker went two for three. And Rodriguez went two for three. But when you got six hits and three batters getting all six, accounting for all six of those hits, it's really hard to win a game. For the Kitsunes, uh, nothing to speak of, nothing exciting to speak of when it comes to hitting. The MVP will go to Danny Jackson. And, uh, of course, he was the one that, uh, I believe, knocked. Uh, wait, wait, who is Danny Jackson? Who's da Oh, yeah, Danny Jackson was the pitcher. I'm sorry. That's interesting. Um, but they're going to give it to Danny Jackson. He went three and two-thirds innings, allowed three hits. He struck out three. So he gets the MVP award. All right. I am going to pause it there and zip it up. I don't know if anybody's going to probably going to go tonight. Um, but we can pick this up again tomorrow. There's no reason to hurry through the week, I don't think. Um, We'll try and get some more games. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. We'll finish out. We'll go ahead and finish out the second. Let's just go ahead and finish this game out. We'll take a look, a quick look at the standings and then zip it up and we can bring it back up on the third. So San Francisco at DGENS. DGENS gets the win. Lester six and seven. Bagby six and nine. Hornsby goes one for four with a home run. Liverpool at Long Island. Liverpool beats Long Island four to three. Hadley Lake at La Lancaster. Lancaster wins five to four over Hadley Lake. Florence at Edmonton. Edmonton four, Florence three. And finally, St. Pete at Carpathian. And the Carpathian Wolves lose to St. Pete five to four. Quick look at the standings. Chico's up by nine in the win division. Liverpool up by three and a half over Hagerstown in the Earth Division. In the water division, mid-Michigan leads Tampa Bay by half a game. And Hadley Lake is only one game back. And finally, over in the fire division, Canada leading Lancaster by three. Canada with the uh, most wins, the best record so far, 54 and 29. And let's just take a quick look at some of the – any we got uh, – Chico still leads in the batting average. Canada leads in runs scored per game. Mid-Michigan still has the best team ERA, which was evident with that one-run game they just gave up. And Lancaster has the best fielding percentage. I'm going to zip this up, and we'll pick this up sometime either tonight. I don't know if Mike can do, do it tonight or not. Um, oh, he says he can do some, so maybe Mike can get in here late tonight. Anybody that's around can watch some games, and we'll definitely get some more tomorrow, tomorrow night, Sunday, Sunday night. And uh, again, this is it. Uh, this is July. So the end of July is the uh, um, trade deadline. I believe the plans are to finish up Wednesday night like we normally do for the month and actually give everybody till Saturday at noon to get in manager files and make trades for the trade deadline. That was the last I heard. I'm not sure if that. Uh, if anything there has changed. So anyways, a um, lot of people in here. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Mike. Carlos was here. Steve, David. Um, I said Jamie already. Bernie came by. Thank you, Bernie. Um, I saw Carlos. I don't know if I said Carlos already. Dwayne came by. I saw Legends here earlier. I don't think he, I don't know if he stayed. Slashed, you were kind of quiet. I don't know if you stuck around for your game or not. Mike, of course, was here, and he's going to take over, I think, some games tonight. I believe Clue got to come by. MV was here for a little while. So we had a pretty good turnout tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Carlos was, of course, the first one in the park. 
Thank you, Carlos, for being here and waiting. I hope you didn't have to wait too long. And uh, I'll get this zipped up and off. Good night, everybody, and look for Mike's stream hopefully later on this evening. Take care.